in this part of the lecture, uh, we will we'll finish that uh, uh, power distribution system planning. Okay. So, this is the last part of this power distribution system planning uh, that is uh, fifth module and uh, only I in my next lecture, I will show you another uh, new paradigm of distribution system planning. But uh, in this part of the lecture, this is the last uh, lecture. Okay. Now, uh, in this part, I will talk about a distribution system planning model, where uh, we have proposed a new reliability index. Okay. And uh, this is a kind of multi objective optimization problem, where uh, the objective functions are uh, one is of course, uh, as similar to the uh, last problem uh, that is the total cost optimization or total minimization of total investment and operational cost. And another objective would be the reliability objective. So, up to this last lecture, we considered the reliability objective or the objective function which is basically considered to improve the reliability or to enhance the reliability is minimization of total interruption cost. Okay. Uh, but in this part of this lecture, I was talking about a new reliability index which is not taught to you so far and it is formulated for a specific purpose and it is applicable only for this distribution system planning problem. In fact, it is devised uh, only for uh, solving this distribution system planning problem, so that the appliance network would have certain degree of reliability. Okay. And this new reliability index is called contingency load loss index, contingency load loss index. It is proposed in one of the our papers, which I will show you after a few while. And also in this uh, planning model, we have incorporated this placement of sectionalizing switches and tie lines into the uh, distribution system planning problem. So, far uh, whatever we have discussed, uh, uh, this distribution system planning problem uh, is solved to determine the feeder routes and bunch conductor sizes. Okay. And in this part of this problem along with this determination of feeder routes and branch conductor size or distribution line conductor size, uh, we have additionally considered uh, the uh, location for sectionalizers. In fact, if you could remember my uh, uh, lecture on uh, uh, module 2 you can remember what is called sectionalizer. It is used to sectionalize a distribution feeder into different parts and thereby it improves the reliability. Now, the question is how a sectionalizer uh, placement improves the reliability? In order to understand that uh, this, pro, uh, this new reliability index is proposed. Okay. And along with the sectionalizing and tie lines, we optimize uh, the number of feeders, uh, feeder routes, number and location of sectionalizing switches already I mentioned and the tie lines. And this everything is done via multi objective optimization approach. Okay. So, before I show you, before I show you the whole uh, multi objective optimization planning approach, let me talk about uh, something called uh, this contingency load loss index and how do we compute that index and uh, how this index uh, is designed or is formulated uh, to, to uh, uh, assess the reliability of a distribution feeder. Okay. So, before I go to that formulation, uh, let us uh, understand the motivations behind this new reliability index formulation. In fact, you have seen uh, in, in my uh, module 3, I discussed the various types of uh, reliability indicators. Okay. 
and uh, the obvious question is instead of using one of them, what is the need uh, to, to propose or to formulate an, a, a new reliability indicator. Okay? So, let, let us see what are the motivations, what are the motiva motivating factors. So, first one is that you have seen the reliability objective represented by total fault or interruption cost, which we have done last two lectures uh, in the in the planning model. Uh, it is uh, basically a function of uh, this failure rate and repair duration of each branch of a distribution network. In fact, uh, we have studied uh, this many reliability indices and most of them are functions of uh, this this failure rate or repair duration. In fact, many of them, not most of them, uh, particularly those are uh, this rely, uh, energy based reliability indices. For example, that energy not supplied, that E N S or expected energy not supplied. So, these uh, indices are function of failure rate and repair duration. However, it is very difficult to estimate this failure rate of uh, this feeder branch as falls in distribution networks frequently occur due to various unpredictable non-technical reasons. This is again I, I discuss uh, uh, during this reliability module that most of the falls of distribution networks uh, occur due to non-technical reasons. Non-technical reason means uh, either they are uh, weather related faults or animal related faults. So, weather related faults are uh, for example, uh, these contacts of small tree branches with the live conductor, because most of the distribution networks are of overhead conductors. So, uh, due to one uh, uh, tree branch suddenly uh, touches, uh, touching this particular live conductor, uh, it may create a fault path and thereby uh, the network whole network would be faulty. Now, the question is uh, nobody can predict that when it happens. Similarly, this uh, there are some uh, uh, faults which are uh, animal related, some uh, uh, animal suddenly touched uh, it may be rat or it may be uh, squirrel or different types of animal including snakes suddenly touched this. Uh, uh, these insulators of the light conductors and thereby creates a uh, short circuiting path. So, most of the time these falls are often cleared within a few microsecond and so sometimes uh, they are uh, not cleared, but uh, these are the examples of uh, non technical falls or interruptions and most of the distribution networks suffer from this type of non technical faults. Okay. And thereby, it is very difficult uh, to estimate this failure rate, what should be the failure rate and what should be the repair duration. We can do so, we can determine this failure rate based upon our experience based data by uh, recording this, uh, this fall data for last few years and so, but uh, it may not be too, uh, uh, it may not be too accurate uh, to consider that because most of the faults are of no are of non technical faults and repair duration of the faults also will vary with the location and severity of the faults so therefore this failure rate uh, which is represented by lambda and this repair duration uh, these are some parameters which are uh, which cannot be predicted prior to the uh, design of a network okay prior to the because Again, you have to understand that in this planning process, we are trying to develop, we are trying to design a network. Okay? Now, uh, for a design network, what would be the uh, failure rate for a particular branch of the conductor due to this type of non technical reason uh, is difficult to predict, okay? it is difficult to estimate. So, therefore, uh, this becomes the motivation factors for proposal of a new reliability index which does not need this type of uh, uh, data uh, that is uh, failure rate and repair duration. Okay? And that is what uh, the concept of contingency load loss index. So, it is defined 
as the ratio of the average non delivered load to due to failure or fault of all the branches considered one at a time to the total load to the total load. So, we have assumed that there is no simultaneous failures of distribution lines or distribution branches or rather uh, the simultaneous failures of distribution lines uh, or distribution uh, line branches uh, is ignored here and we assume that this index is computed based upon the uh, fault of a uh, distribution line or a distribution branch occurring one at a time. Okay. And uh, we determine that what should be the non delivered load, non delivered load means how do you define this non delivered load, non delivered load means uh, the load which are which need to be uh, curtailed or which need to be said at due to this fault, okay, due to this fault and which cannot be delivered. In fact, uh, those loads which cannot be delivered due to this uh, fault and which fault? Uh, this is basically uh, a branch or line fault and we assume that uh, each of the line faults uh, are of uh, each of the line fault is of independent or they uh, and this occur one at a time that means one at a branch or one at a line. I will show an example how to compute uh, this index for a typical distribution feeder and how it improves the reliability or how it uh, measures not improves it how it measures the reliability. Okay. It is a ratio of non delivered load to the uh, total load demand to the total load demand and this load demand etcetera we considered uh, as the peak load demand of course, because this planning etcetera uh, planning is certain parameter which is done considering peak load demand data. Okay. All right. Now, how do you compute this average uh, non delivered load? this is uh, by considering this uh, one branch failure at a time N D L I stands for non delivered load uh, due to uh, this fault or contingency at distribution line or distribution branch uh, I okay, or for ith distribution line or ith distribution branch. And N B is total number of branches or total number of lines of a distribution network. So, if we have a uh, distribution feeder having two line sections. So, this is uh, suppose substation, substation. So, this is node 1 or bus 1 and this is node 2 and this is node 3. These are of course, load buses as you know. Now, in order to determine the CLLI of this particular feeder section, what we need to do? Uh, we need to first determine what is that CLLI due to uh, this uh, failure or fault in this uh, particular line section. Suppose this uh, gives some data like N D L 1 and due to this branch fault suppose non delivered load is N D L 2. So, what we will do CLLI in order to compute this CLLI we first determine the average non delivered load. So, that is equal to N D L 1 plus N D L 2 divided by 2, 2 is the number of lines or number of branches. Here we have two lines, one is connecting bus 1 or node 1 to node 2, another is connecting node 2 to node 3. So, we have uh, two uh, lines. So, we consider that one line fault at a time, we did not consider the simultaneous faults both the lines. Okay. So, we consider that uh, line fault one at a time and we accordingly determine that how much load would not be delivered due to the fault of this particular line as well as this particular line and we will make an average, we will make a uh, mean of that okay. and this divided by total load demand L total uh, will give you that the value of this contingency load loss index. In fact, this denominator is basically to normalize this data okay. and, uh, and that is why this CLLI will always vary in between 0 to 1. So, the range of the CLLI, the range of 
C L L I is 0 to 1. So, it can be 0 or it can be 1. 0 means there is no non delivered load at all, which is not possible, of course, because uh, due to fault, certain uh, non delivered load would be definitely there. So, 0 is not possible, but it is possible that uh, C L L I can be 1 if due to the branch fault or due to the line fault, the total load of a particular feeder section is uh, curtailed or is said is to be said at. So, that is something that is one should understand. So, 0 means it is the uh, best reliable network and C L L I once means uh, C L L I equal to 1 means it is a worst reliable network. Okay, so, these two are the two possible extreme uh, cases. Okay. So, minimization of C L L I would be the our goal, so as to maximize the reliability of a network. Okay. So, here is some uh, quantitative example, where is one quantitative example to understand the computation of this index that is C L L I. Okay. So, here we have considered a feeder section, this is one feeder, let us say feeder 1 and this is another feeder. Okay. Both of the feeders having same number of nodes. So, these are, uh, this is a 7 node system, 7 node feeder and uh, this is also an example of 7 node feeder. The only difference between this feeder 1 and feeder 2 is that there is a sectionalizer here. There is a sectionalizer very close to this node 4 in this feeder 2. So, that is the only difference. So, the only difference difference between these two feeder is that there is a sectionalizer or sectionalizing switch switch at feeder 2. Okay. So, here we have a sectionalizing switch. Now, what is the purpose of the sectionalizing switch? It uh, sectionalizes this feeder uh, that is feeder 2 into two sections, one is section 1, another is section 2. Okay. And uh, it is normally closed switches and uh, it is similar to isolator. For example, uh, it is not a breaker uh, which will which can interrupt or which can make the circuit uh, on load condition, rather it is an, an example of similar to uh, this isolator which can be operated at no load condition. Okay. So, the circuit breaker uh, both the feeders are located in the substation. So, these are the main circuit breakers. So, these are the main circuit breakers and normally you know the circuit breakers are located in a in a substation only. Okay. Now, what is the impact of having a sectionalizer here in this particular feeder? Let us examine and this examination will be doing with this computation of this C L L I index. Okay. Now, what we will do? We will uh, uh, this, this compute this C L L I for this network A or feeder 1 or feeder 1 and we will also compute this C L L I for uh, network B or feeder 2. Okay. Now, in order to compute the C L L I of uh, feeder 1, it is assumed that this power demand of all these nodes, here we have one substation and rest uh, uh, 6 nodes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 nodes are of load nodes and each of the load nodes are having a certain uh, peak demand and we assume that they are having uniform peak demand of 100 kVA. 
Okay, so each of the nodes of having 100 kVA peak demand, 100 kVA peak demand. Okay. Now, uh, let us consider this feeder one. Uh, what we will be doing in order to compute the CLLI, we will assume that there will be no simultaneous uh, branch failure or line failure and uh, we also assume that uh, each of the line uh, failure event would be independent. Okay. Now, uh, here you can see in this particular feeder, we have uh, because it is having 7 numbers of nodes uh, and it is a radial feeder. So, it will have 7 minus 1 that is 6 numbers of 6 numbers of uh, lines or branches. Okay. So, you can uh, see that in between uh, this uh, node 1 to node 2 there is a branch, in between 2 to 3 there is a another branch, similarly 3 to 4 another branch and so on. So, we have 6 numbers of branches. Now, what will happen if there is a fault in any of the branch? Uh, what would be the impact to the feeder? Uh, since we do not have any uh, other interrupting device in this particular feeder, uh, if there is any of the fault which might be here uh, in between node 6 to node 7 or which might be anywhere. Okay. So, this will result in the uh, interruption of this circuit breaker because this circuit breaker is the main interrupter for this particular feeder and thereby all these nodes, all these nodes would be isolated to the um, substation okay. and there will be a loss of uh, total loss of the uh, load okay. and uh, since each of this uh, load is associated with 100 kV of load demand. So, due to fault of any uh, line branch, it may be here as I have shown or it may be here as well. Okay. The, it will cause an uniform load curtailment or load loss that will be equal to uh, this total number of load demand which is equal to 100 multiplied by 6 that is 600 kVA. So, due to any particular section falls whole loss would be lost okay. and uh, since we have uh, 6 numbers of a uh, line of the branches. So, total loss of the load due to this faults or interruption in one uh, in, in any of this or each of this uh, line one at a time will be 6 multiplied by 600 and if we take the average of that, if we take the mean of that, this will be 6 multiplied by 6 divided by number of branches that we have or number of lines we have that is uh, 6. So, this will be uh, rather 600. So, this gives you 600 and this is normalized with the total load demand which is also 600 and thereby. Uh, the CLLI for this particular feeder section would be equal to 1 and that is the worst possible value of CLLI. All right. So, for feeder 1 or this network A, here it is mentioned network A, our uh, CLLI what we got as 1. Okay. Now, uh, let us examine that uh, what would be the value of the CLLI for feeder 2. In order to compute this uh, CLLI for the feeder 2, which is uh, having one sectionalizer at this particular point that is in between this uh, nodes 4 and 5 and it is assumed to be uh, at the vicinity of node 4, what would be the change of the CLLI? that is something uh, interesting to find. Okay. Now, since we have two sections here uh, due to the presence of the sectionalizer, any fault or any branch fault uh, of this section 2, for example, if there is a branch fault here or if there is a branch fault here, this will lead to the interruption of the circuit breaker, but uh, once it is sensed that it happens to be at section 2, what we can do? We can uh, open this uh, sectionalizer and thereby uh, you, we can isolate this faulty part 
from this uh, particular feeder and we can keep the uh, load uh, uh, supply to this node uh, 2, 3 and 4 to this nodes 2, 3 and 4 uh, we can keep intact. Okay. So, so, any fault of this section 2 uh, can be isolated by opening of the sectionalizer, sectionalizing switch and thereby uh, keeping its upstream section. So, this here section 1, section 1 is called upstream section. and section 2 is called downstream section. Because power always flow from uh, power always uh, flows from uh, substation to the all uh, nodes in a uni uh, in a unified direction okay. and uh, thereby this section 2 is the uh, downstream section of section 1 and section 1 is basically upstream section of the section 1. So, any fault in the downstream section would be isolated by this particular uh, sectionalizer and thereby its upstream section can be kept as healthy and that is what the uh, you know purpose of having sectionalizer that is what the purpose of having sectionalizer. In fact, a small time uh, it will be faulty the whole feeder uh, still the we isolate this sectionalizer uh, still uh, we isolate this faulty section and thereby keeping uh, this uh, upstream section which is healthy section uh, isolated from the faulty section. Okay. So, what will happen, what will be the non delivered load if we there if there is a fault in this particular uh, section 2 at any of the branch of this section 2 that will be equal to the total load demand of that particular section and here we have 3 uh, you know uh, loads. So, each of having uh, 100 kVA demand. So, here we have all together 300 kVA of loss of load due to fault of any of the section fault of any of the section and we have three sections one is in between uh, any of the section uh, I should say any of the line or any of the branch in a particular section because uh, in this particular section that is section 2 we have three branches one is connecting node 4 and node 5 another is connecting node 5 and node 6 another is connecting node 6 and node 7. So, we have three section and for a uh, fault in any of this section will uh, create a loss of 300 kb of the load. So, total uh, non delivered load due to this uh, fault of any of this branch or any of this lies in the section is 3 multiplied by 300 kb. Okay. However, in the upstream section that is in section 1, if there is any fault at any of the branch either it is uh, a branch connecting node three to node four or node two to node three or node one to node two. Uh, if there is a fault at any of the section, uh, either there is a fault at here or the fault at here or a fault at here. So, impact will be same, impact will be same. What would be the impact? Impact would be the total loss of the load because this this is then the circuit breaker will trip and isolate the whole uh, feeder from the fault and thereby there will be total loss of the because there is no way to keep this uh, supply of this 5, 6, 7 which are the downstream nodes or which are located in the downstream section healthy because power will always, always flow from the substation to this. Under this particular feeder configuration there is no way to, to keep this section to uh, energize. Okay. And therefore, for this type of branch failure will cause the total loss of the load. So, there would be loss of 600 kV of the load and we have three branches here one is connecting node 1 to node 2, another is connecting node 2 to node 3, another is connecting node 3 to node 4. So, there will be 
3 multiplied by 600 kVA of uh, non delivered load. And here we have 3 multiplied by 300 kV of non delivered load. So, once we add these two, we will get total non delivered load which is shown over here, shown over here. And since we have total uh, 6 number of branches or lines here, so we uh, divide it by 6 in order to find the average non delivered load. This uh, is again normalized with the total load demand. And once you do so, it will be lower than 1 because uh, the obvious reason there it is 300 multiplied by 3 and it is coming out to be 0.75. So, it shows that uh, this, this value this value shows the reliability of feeder 2 is better as compared to feeder 1. Okay. All right, because as I said that low as uh, C, uh, lower value of CLLI would be preferable or we our goal would be to minimize the value of the CLLI in order to maximize the reliability of the whole network and that is exactly done here. And one thing you can also understand that if there is any uh, fault in the downstream section and if there is a sectionalizer which sectionalize this downstream and upstream section, then we can isolate the downstream section through the sectionalizer. But if there is any fault in the upstream section, there is no way to keep or no, there is no way to restore uh, the supply of the nodes who are located which are located in the downstream section. That is something one needs to understand very clearly. Now, again this uh, our goal of this multi objective optimization uh, is to locate the sectionalizer as well as tie lines. Okay. So, what in order to do so, we propose a multi objective planning model and in fact, we propose two models in one model net we determine this network structure uh, uh, it is a two step model we, we determine uh, this network structure uh, and along with this location of the sectionalizer in the first step of optimization and there is a next step that is the second step of step optimization this is used for uh, determination of the number and locations of the tie lines Okay. So, this is a uh, kind of sequential uh, two steps optimization in one step we are determining uh, this feeder routes number of feeders and the number and locations of the sectionalizer and in another step that is the next step and that will uh, that will be sequential step uh, we determine the locations of the tie lines okay. and that is why it is a sequential case type of optimization. And here we have proposed two uh, case two cases in one case uh, there will be an iterative uh, two step optimization in which this uh, after first step optimization we will perform the second step optimization and uh, this will be repeated in different iteration this is called iterative uh, two step optimization and another is non iterative in which uh, one uh, the first step of optimization would be done before and then after completion of the first step of opti optimization, we will perform the second step optimization. So, non iterative uh, you know optimization is basically completely sequential optimization approach, but uh, iterative is something that which will iterate iteratively done this first step and second step. Okay. And we uh, use this uh, strength Pareto evolutionary uh, algorithm to best multi objective particle sum optimization, which we proposed in the last planning model itself, in fact, uh, last two planning models as the solution strategy. Okay. Now, here we get the flow chart. This is uh, you know non iterative two step planning model, this is non iterative two step planning model, uh, where this first step planning model planning optimization is done. After that, second step optimization is done. So, this is a sequential two step 
first step followed by the second step. And in iterative two step planning model, th uh, this is uh, flow chart. So, we, we first det we determine this you know we perform this first step optimization followed by second step optimization and this is iteratively done okay and that is why it is not a sequential optimization okay this is not a sequential optimization now let us see that what are our objective functions for this performing these two planning approaches so this is the these are the objective functions for uh, first step planning or both I mean, iter both the iterative and non iterative approach this is the this is the first objective functions for the first step of optimization one is the, the total cost so this one is total cost total cost uh, by minimizing which we are basically minimizing both the uh, objective functions uh, simultaneously and the minimizing of total cost you know will give you economy will uh, provide you an economical network whereas uh, the CLLI is uh, as you have seen in the last slide it is an example or indicator to measure the reliability of the network by minimizing that we will get a reliable network okay so these are the two objective functions so it's a bi objective or two objective optimization uh, problem uh, where we have two different objective functions and as we have seen that uh, cost and reliability traditionally will conflict each other conflict with each other and therefore uh, we need to follow some multi objective optimizations uh, approach to solve this okay now this total cost includes uh, that the cost of this uh, uh, this new feeder section so here we have considered this similar objective functions we have formulated before but apart from that we consider that uh, the cost of this sectionalizers or uh, sectionalizing switches needs to be added which is this feeder section so this gives cost of sectionalizer or sectionalizing switch and this section is basically the cost of building a new feeder this section is cost of building a new feeder branch and this one is basically cost of new substation or yeah new substation so depending upon the number of substation we will always have one substation only so this will be the cost of new substation and of course this CLLI already I explained what it what is it so this CIO that is uh, the total investment and operational cost it provides the total cost involved in uh, uh, developing a whole network and also uh, this network uh, uh, will consist of the sectionalizers okay and in second step uh, planning because in second step planning our goal is to place these tie lines uh, we can determine the location of tie lines once we get this uh, network topology of the network uh, uh, we get the network topology or network structure so uh, the second step optimization it is an uh, there is an added term which is the uh, which is due to the cost of locating a tie line or cost of building a tie line okay so this total cost in addition to that this cost component is there which is uh, due to the addition of uh, so this is cost to build tie lines and uh, other you know objective function is same that is CLLI okay CLLI with tie line CLLI dash to, uh, double dash means CLLI CLLI is determined after uh, consideration of tie line and CLLI dash one dash is representing the uh, CLLI after 
consideration of sectionalizer. Okay. So, these are uh, you know particle encoding scheme uh, to, to encode the information of uh, this uh, all these problem variables to a particle and this is a type of uh, indirect encoding. So, uh, it is a combination of indirect encoding. So, this part is basically indirect encoding indirect encoding by uh, decoding which we can get a network structure or network topology whereas, this is a uh, part which we, where we will follow this direct encoding. Okay. So, whatever you will get uh, at this particular section this gives you total number of feeders and whatever you will get at this section this gives you total number of sectionalizers or sectionalizing switches. Okay. This particle encoding decoding scheme is used for first step planning and this is for used for second step planning. In second step planning our goal is to uh, determine the tie lines uh, in fact tie lines location. So, these are used direct encoding process. Okay. Now, this is the pseudo codes for uh, this step 1 optimization. It is exactly similar to the before uh, we use this multi objective particle sum optimization. We also use strength parity evolutionary algorithm for uh, assigning the fitness of the particle and uh, rest of the things are exactly similar to the what previous. So, this is the main iterative loop, this is the main iterative loop where we iteratively update the solution by updating the velocity and position of each each of the particle in a particular population size in a particular population okay and population size and maximum iteration these are the two things uh, these are the two parameters we will uh, specify uh, much before we execute this loop okay now these are the solutions these are the pareto approximation solutions that we got uh, from this multi objective optimization approach and uh, this is uh, the result of 21 node system, this is, the this is for 21 node system, this is for 54 node system and this is for 100 node system. Again we got uh, basically two uh, parrot of approximation forms in each of the system, one is marked with this circle, another is marked with uh, triangle and these are uh, you know uh, by modifying this right selection mechanism of SPA to MOPSO, one is followed by GBS topology, another is for ring topology. These are different uh, you know topology used to select the leader or used to select a guide or used to select a global best. Uh, one needs to understand this particles of optimization in order to understand this whole philosophy. Okay. Now, one you can see that uh, this highest value of CLLI we got 1 and lowest value of CLLI we got at somewhat uh, lower value uh, means uh, less than 0.2 and here also we got uh, you know uh, CLLI lowest value of CLLI is somewhat in between 0.1 to 0.2 and highest value is of course 1. So, these are two extreme solutions for all these uh, different Pareto fronts and this these solutions are basically this these solutions are uh, solutions with worst reliability because they are having CLLI value equal to 1, but best economy because why best economy? Be because these are this corresponds to the lowest value of the cost. In fact, this corresponds to the lowest value of the cost, which you can see. And similarly, these uh, solutions, this solution, this is this and this solution, these solutions are the best solution. in view of CLLI or reliability, but worst solution, worst in view of 
economy. Okay. So, this is something that already I explained in my last lecture that these two are the ex two extreme solutions, one is best solution in view of the economy, another is best solution in view of reliability and all other with the intermediate values of uh, this economy and reliability. Okay. Now, here you can see uh, this, this slide gives that for 21 node system, uh, this is the uh, network topology which obtained uh, which is most economical network that is uh, in fact this this net this network uh, that is this corner solutions which is having the lowest value of the cost which is which are associated with the lowest value of the cost and these are single feeder network as you can see there is no sectionalizer here uh, so obviously that uh, uh, the CLLI of this most economical network would be equal to 1. The, so, that uh, if there is any fault of any of the branch, it will cause the total loss of the uh, load. Okay. But if you look at this right hand side, this network topology, this is a case of uh, most reliable not network, which are shown over uh, this, this corner solutions, this corner solutions. So, base solution in view of the reliability. And this is of a three feeder network. This shows this is a three feeder network. Three feeder network. So this is a single feeder network, and this is a three feeder network with many sectionalizers located in different parts of the network. And uh, uh, these sectionalizers and these feeders definitely uh, causes this uh, its lowest value of CLLI. Okay. And same thing we obtain for other system, this is for 54 node system, this is most economical network, this is again a single feeder network uh, and here uh, it is a most reliable network, it is of a three feeder network, three feeder network. So, here uh, why you are getting this three feeder network as the most reliable, because we have assigned that uh, total number of feeders should not exceed three here. Okay. If you assign it to 5, then we may get a network with having 5 uh, feeders and so on. Okay. And here you can see uh, this in the most ne economical network, there is a no sectionalizer anywhere. So, if there is any fault at any part of the network, it will cause you know uh, not the total loss of energy, but it will cause the total loss of yeah, it is a single feeder network. So, it will cause the total loss of the supply. Similarly, here, if there is any fault in the any branch, it will not cause the total loss of the uh, supply or total loss of the load. Similarly, here uh, you know in this is the result of that we got from 100 node system, it is also a single feeder network that you can see and it is a case of most economical network, where there is no sectionalizer anywhere. So, if there is any fault at any point of this or any branch of this network, it will cause the total loss of the supply or total loss of the load. But this is the uh, network topology we got uh, as uh, most reliable network. It is again a three feeder network having many sectionalizer uh, located in different parts of the network. So, if there is any fault in any feeder section, it will never cause uh, the total loss of the supply. Okay. So, here we give uh, one uh, you know uh, comparison uh, to show that how this variations of uh, in total cost that is total installation or in operational cost or total investment cost uh, and this other uh, reliability uh, of objective that is CLLI. Uh, how these two uh, uh, in uh, these these two objectives vary with different number of sectionalizing switches and different number of feeders that we get in the solution. In fact, uh, the solutions that we get in this Pareto front, each solution is having one specific number of feeders and a specific number of sectionalizers which we got through this optimization process. So, if we uh, just differentiate the solutions in view of the number of feeders, in view of the number of sectionalizers, then how they are the cost will vary. 
So, here you can see for single feeder network it is number of sectionalizers are very less, the solutions having single feeders and sectionalizers are very less and the cost will be the uh, lowest. Similarly, for a double feeder network uh, the sectionalized number of section these are the number of sectionalizers and cost is slightly increasing and uh, for triple feeder network these are the numbers of sectionalizers and x the sectional number of sectionalizers uh, increasing uh, the total cost will also increase and it exact opposite nature of the fact that you will get in CLLI for single feeder network you can see value of CLLI are pretty high and uh, for double feeder network these are this layer and for triple feeder network these are this layer. And these two uh, you know the objective of providing these two uh, characteristics is to show the conflictness. So, this shows this shows the conflicting nature conflicting nature between cost and reliability. Okay. So, this is just to show how this cost and reliability will conflict with each other and thereby we need to uh, consider simultaneous optimization of both the objectives in a multi objective optimization approach. So, this is the you know next step of optimization. So, previously the these are the results of the first step of, of optimization that we got, uh, these are the results of first step of optimization, first step of optimization. Okay. So, after this first step of optimization we can determine the network topology, number of feeders and the location of the sectionalizers etcetera. From this from this particular network structure we can find out the candidate locations for tie lines in order to find the best location for the tie lines in the uh, next step of optimization. Okay. So, this is exactly done in that uh, particular slide. So, this is how we use some heuristic idea in order to find this uh, candidate tie lines, the potential tie lines and this is only possible if we get the network topology. So, without that uh, we cannot find the potential tie line locations or candidate tie lines location. Okay. And uh, with this uh, in fact uh, as we have seen. Uh, this is this this uh, figure shows that uh, uh, suppose we have two feeders one is this feeder another is this feeder. So, this is suppose feeder 1 this is suppose feeder 2 and we have uh, one sectionalizer in the feeder 1 and two sectionalizers in feeder 2. So, we have total uh, two sections in feeder 1 and three sections in feeder 2. So, we find out that uh, adjacent nodes from one particular section to other, so that we can find out the candidate locations for the tie line. So, we can make a tie lines uh, between these two feeders by connecting any two nodes and this is done by determination of the adjacent uh, nodes of one particular section to other. Okay. And then we uh, optimize this uh, tie line location is again by considering a a multi objective optimization approach and here we consider binary PSO, which is another variant of PSO, uh, which is applicable when your decision variables or, or problem variables are of binary. Okay. And uh, this binary PSO literature one can find out and with this binary uh, uh, PSO we determine the locations of the tie lines. So, here this is how we uh, encode this particle information. Uh, here all the candidate tie lines are uh, determined and they are put in a particle uh, section and accordingly we, we assign either 1 or 0 to each of this section and thereby selecting this which uh, candidate tie lines we should consider for final implementation. Okay. This is the pseudo code again uh, for uh, the second step of planning. And uh, then we get uh, the location of the tie lines, these results are not shown in order to find this result one needs to go through uh, these, these papers uh, which is published in uh, this journal, Swarm and Evolutionary Computation LCVR 
in 2012. Okay. Now, in summary, in this particular lecture, what we uh, did? We proposed a novel uh, reliability index, and which can uh, which can be applicable uh, when we do not have uh, the data of this uh, uh, failure rate and repair duration okay, for a particular uh, feeder section or particular uh, uh, branch. Okay. And uh, we implement this uh, CLLI as one of the objectives to determine the locations of sectionalizing switches and tie lines as well and also to determine this uh, number of feeders in a network. And uh, most important part of this is basically this index does not need uh, this information of failure rate and repair duration to compute the reliability, but it can assess the reliability uh, so that we can differentiate one network topology with other. Okay. So, the detailed result if one can find in this particular paper and in this particular paper one uh, we can get this. Uh, uh, single objective and multi objective planning models, which we discussed uh, before. Okay. Uh, this is published in again one LCBR journal applied soft computing. And in this particular paper, one should get the idea of dynamic programming and how it is uh, extended to solve a multi objective optimization approach uh, to, to determine the feeder uh, topology and conductor sizes. Uh, for a particular distribution network. So, these are uh, my work only. Apart from that, there are many references one can find out. So, these first three references are review papers on distribution system planning. Uh, these are published long time ago. This book is essentially gives you an idea of uh, multi objective optimization, multi objective optimization. And this uh, papers give you uh, this idea of PSO, particle swarm optimization. And this is for understanding this strength Pareto evolutionary algorithm. This is for understanding this, this uh, dynamic programming. This is a book. Uh, and this dynamic programming is previously implemented uh, only once uh, before us uh, in this particular paper. This gives you the idea of the reliability, uh, idea of the reliability, and this gives you the idea of this optimal uh, switch placement that is sectionalizing switch placement uh, in a distribution network. But apart from that, I also uh, would like to uh, uh, tell you that most of this data of particularly 21 node system and 100 node system data we got from the archival of an author which is acknowledged over here. This is basically published by Carano etcetera all in IEEE power delivery, IEEE transaction of power delivery 2006. So, one need to uh, contact this author, author in order to get this detailed data for 21 node and 100 node system. And for 54 node system, 182 node system, this data you can get. Uh, in the reference of uh, one of the papers uh, in the three references I have shown to you. Okay. So, that is in this reference one can get the data related to 21 node and 100 node system and uh, in this note uh, particular paper one can get uh, the similar system data and uh, we have acknowledged the source of the data. Uh, so, one can also contact this author to find this data. Okay. So, with this I will uh, complete this part of the lecture and thank you for your attention.